Okay. Welcome to class. And I hope you're ready for class today. All right, now let's dive into what we have this morning. Now, how do fashion design come into existence? That is one question I want you to ponder over. How do fashion design come into existence? Have you ever thought about that? What exactly are the formulas? What makes fashion what it is? Why is fashion everywhere you go online? Fashion, 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 fashion. What is the key rediment of fashion? Now, this is the question I want you to ponder over why we'll go through this topic and why we'll go through this subject. Now, today we'll be talking about textile design. And this is a three-model course. So we're going to do the part one, and then we'll take in the part two, and then finally we'll go over to the part three. So I want you to sit down tight, get your drink, get your sketch pad, get anything you think you will use for your art class as we dive into the class. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, now what are the objectives of our class, of our lessons today? Now, the first thing we're going to look at, we're going to define textile. What exactly is textile? The second thing we'll look at, we'll look at the origin of textile fabrics, or textile in quotes. Then we're going to talk about textile as an art. We're going to look at textile as an art. Then we'll treat the concept in textile making. After looking at the concept in textile making, we'll also talk about textile art techniques which is the techniques in what in textile design then finally we're going to look at what the construction what method of what textile so these are exciting topics or exciting subheadings we are going to treat as we move into this class and i want you to make sure you're calm and then you guard everything although this class will be more of you know more of the talk 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 a little of the practicals you understand so but i just want you to sit down tight pay proper attention if there's any question you want to ask don't fail don't fail to go on on our on the website and then you know ask up your question okay now let's dive in now first what is textile design but i'm going to define textile on its own then maybe in the course of this other i will not define design on its own so that you can actually differentiate between textile and then design and then you bring the two of them together and make a holistic definition of the word textile design now so what is textile now this is the textile is the, is, is the art of fabric production and what decoration simple simply the act of fabric production and what decoration so that is what textile is it is what the fabric the act of fabric production and what decoration period now textile arts are arts and crafts that are used or that uses what plant animal or any synthetic fabric to construct practical or decorative what object textile as an art is an art that makes use of what plants, animal, or synthetic what fibers to construct a practical or decorative what object. What do I mean by practical object or decorative object? Now, practical object could be it could be a cup, yes, but that is engulfed with what with a fabric. You understand? So that is a kind of a practical object. It could be it could be a tool that has you know the the play of fabric to it. It could be anything. As well as what, even your sofa in your house, the chair I'm sitting on, now has a, um, a, a, a textile base. So that is exactly what we're talking about. That it could be what? Now this is an art and craft that uses plants, animal, or synthetic fiber to construct practical or decorative object. I hope you get that. So we have defined textile which is the art of fabric production and decoration. And then I will define textile as an art, which is what's the art and craft that uses plant, animal, or synthetic fiber to construct practical or decorative object. All right, now let's continue. Now, if you look at the image you're seeing in front of you, now you see it is a beautiful house that is engulfed with textile everywhere. You see the table, you see that textile kind of um, rumple, you see on the floor, you have the rug, you see on the chair, you see the painting on the wall, you know, everything about this building is 100% what, let me just say 50% textile and then the rest, you know, that's now flowed in. So that is one of the impacts of textile. So now let's talk about the origin of textile. What exactly is the origin of textile? Textile have been a fundamental part of human life since the beginning of what civilization. So it has been there, it has been a part of human life since the beginning of um, you know, innovation. Now, for those of us that are Christians, we can actually link 
textile as early as Adam and Eve. Because that was even when God created the first textile design, when he killed the lamp and used it to make clothes. Meanwhile, Adam has already practicalized it with the leaf. You know, use leaf to cover his nakedness and that of his wife. That is if you're a Christian. Well, for the Muslim, I don't know, or anything, I don't know about what I'm just talking from a particular perspective, from this other Christianity perspective. That is the one I'm more familiar with. But however, that is textile originated is a fundamental part of human life since the beginning of civilization. Now, the method and materials used to make them has expanded enormously, while the functions of textile have remained in the same, has been constant. The function of textile has never changed. In as much as you know, the, 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 the fundamental, you know, the materials that I use has evolved, you know, have changed, have increased, but yet the functions of textile has been constant. That's the remain. That is why textile is what exchange of days. You understand that so far as man lives, there should be there will be textile. Maybe I don't know the new invention that will come up to, re to, to, to replace it, but for now, it has remained the same. Now, there are many functions of textile, whether it be for clothing or something for decorative or household, for shelter, for anything. You know, there are a lot of functions of textile. So, in case they ask you, list five functions of textile. Now, you know where you're coming from for clothing, for decorative method, for housing, for shelter, you know, for this, for that. You can add your own. So, those are the functions of textile textile now if you look at the image you're seeing now you see a lot of textile fabric now those fabrics can be used for several purposes it could be used for table cover it could be used for you know you know for i don't know what you call it for towel it could be used for window blind it could be used for center rug it could be used for match um, your carpets it could be used for anything and then it takes time and what consistency to deliver the needed results while making a textile design. So we are still talking about the history of textile. Now, the history of textile arts is also the history of what? International trade. As old as international trade is as old as the textile art. During the Tyrant Purple Dye was an important trade, you know, good in the ancient Mediterranean period. Now, the Silk Road brought the Chinese silk and to India and Africa and even in Europe and what? Conversely, what? The sardine silk. To the China. Let me explain what that means. Now, textile design brought about trades, brought about international trade. You know, it is one of the major link in Nigeria before we grow cotton. So we export our cotton. It's quite unfortunate that we no longer produce cotton again. It's funny, but you know, cotton was one of our, um, one of our, you know, just like one of our export commodity. You understand that increases our GDP. Now, but it's quite unfortunate that we no longer throw most most of our weight on it based on god knows what but however textile brought about international trade all right so these are some of the products of textile that could be what exported as international words for international good and what trade now taste for imported luxury fabric led to as in led to a law that kindled you know the movement of what this trade and then down to the Middle Age, down to the Renaissance, the Industrial Revolution was shaped largely by the innovation in textile technology. Now, the cotton gain and what's the spinning jenny and the powder loom, which is a machine, or the power loom, which is a mechanized way of producing textile, led to the Ladit Rebellion. Now, it got to a point when, you know, they started bringing different machines, different methods. So, it started affecting other people in the Renaissance period. Now, it now created a revolution. You know, we now created a revolution that caused the rebellion of what deluded. So that is one of the, you know, the external ancient history of what textile. So let's still proceed. And then with the same picture I showed you, these are some of the images too that will actually influence, you know, the, 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 the battle or the rebellion between these two countries. You know, most times if, for example, Nigeria, we produce crude oil and then Tesla, started inventing, or Toyota now joined Tesla to start inventing electric cars, automatically it will affect our exports big time because most countries will stop using, you know, the crude, the oil car, and then they will go for electric cars. And now that will cause, you know, kind of rebellion. Most countries will say, no, you can't be doing this. Others will say, no, no, at the end of the day, whoever wins the, the battle or whoever the market asset stays. So that is just one of the things that affected or the move of what the textile all right now textile as an art let's look at textile as an art 
Traditionally, the term art was used to refer to us, to any skill or mastery. The term art was referred to as any skill or mastery, a concept which altered during the Romantic period of the 19th century when art came to be seen as a special faculty of human mind to be classified with religion and what science. You don't get that. I will repeat it again. Now, traditionally, the term art was used to refer to as silk and to refer to as any skill or mastery, a concept with all that or which altered during the what the Romantic period. Now, from the 19th century, when art came to be seen as a special faculty of human mind to be classified with religious and what the science, you know. The science so art was seen as something that is that is attached with, with with the human because there's no way you can take away art from humanity so if you take away art it's not possible because everything we do is art so during the romantic period that was when as in the 19th century that was when art was fully seen as a special faculty of human mind so they engulfed it in both education and to mention but a few now this is on that sample of what art can actually represent. Now, the distinction between craft and fine art is applied to the textile art as well. Now, crafting and fine art are one, two subjects that engulfed textile. Now, as a fine artist, for example, after making this fabric, for them to inculcate fine art to it, you, you start seeing designs. You know, that's where the fine art comes in. You start seeing paintings. They started introducing painting on textile. They started introducing all form of... And again, the craft in it now is the weaving form. So textile is so liberal and open, it can accommodate so many skills and techniques. You know, it can accommodate a lot. So then, between craft and then fine art, is applied to textile art as well. We are the term fiber art. Or textile art is now used to describe textile based on decorative objects which are not intended for what practical uses. Now, like I told you initially, the practical use, which are those items, those utility items, and then the decorative use, you know, which is for beautifications and all of that. Now, by the time they bring, how do they bring all this together? It's okay, okay, since fi um, textile design can actually accommodate all this. You have to merge it together to call it what? Textile art or fiber art. So that's where you get the name, textile art. Meanwhile, textile is an applied art. It falls under what? The applied art. And another name for applied art is what? Industrial art. So in case you see this, they can use industrial art or they can use applied art. So the both of them, they mean the same thing. So that is exactly what textile is all about. Now, let's proceed and then see Okay, so these are some of the products of textile art. Now, now let's look at the concept in textile making. What are the concepts in textile making? Now, the word textile is from the Latin, which means the te texere. It means what? The texere, which means to weave or to breed or even to construct. And that is where it came from. It's a Latin maxim. It's a Latin word, you know, that means to weave or to breed or to con construct. Now, the simplest textile art is flirting. The simplest textile art is flirting. Now, in which animal fiber are mounted together using heat and moisture. Now, most textile art begins with twisting or spinning or plain fiber to make yarn. Now, yarn in quotes is called thread. Now, when it is, when it is you know, fine, when it is very small, you know, they call it thread. And then but by the time they make it, you know, heavy and strong, it's called what? Rope. So don't mistake between thread, yarn, and then rope. So yarn is called thread when it is fine and rope when it is heavy. All right. So now let's continue. Now this is a perfect example of what I'm trying to explain. Now you see the bigger one is known as what? The rope. Why those smaller ones who can regard them as what? As thread. Okay, so now that is that about that. Okay, so now the yarn is then knotted, you know, is knotted or loomed or braided or woven. Now to make flexible fabric or clothes and then 
the clothes can be used to make what? Clothing. What am I trying to say? By the time they get this yarn, they could be knotted, they could be loomed, they could be braided, they could be woven, you know, to make flexible fabric or clothes. And then those clothes can be used as what? Clothing, which is what we wear, what I wear, and all that things, you know, and, you know, and even furniture. Now, all of these items, with that thread, with that yarn, with that fabric, and finished objects are collectively referred to as what? Textile. So I hope you're understanding exactly what I'm saying. So all of these, call it thread, call it yarn, call it finished objects, call it decorative medium, they all refer to as what? Textile. So, so far so good. We've been talking about the history and the process, the concept, the use, the functions of textile. But we'll go down in detail to break each and every one of these things so that you can actually get them in full. Okay. Now, looking at this, you'll see how they twined yarn, as in the slick yarn, weave it, you know, loom it. In order for them to achieve this texture you're seeing on your screen. Now, that's the, the, the power of yarn. How useful it is. How it can be played with to create things. All right. So, that is one example. All right. So, now, textile art techniques. Now, let's look at the techniques in making textile. The textile arts also include those techniques which are used to embellish or decorate textiles. The textile arts techniques. Now, don't mistake textile techniques for textile arts techniques now these are two different things now the arts techniques is how you embellish the textile those fabric from the yarn when you've gotten them you've woven them you've made them to be clothed now the techniques in adding it to make it that art remember i told you it could it could it, the the difference between textile arts and then um, craft now the crafting is the making of the fabric it could be woven it could be loomed it could be braided Anyhow, that's a craft. Now, the textile art techniques is a different thing altogether. It is how you embellish designs, the techniques you use in embellishing decorative what, designs on the textile fabric. Now, the first one we are going to look at is the resist method. It's called what? The resist method. Now, the resist method is, we have two major resist methods. The first one is known as what? The batik. And the second one is tie and dye. Now, in our previous class, I know I've done justice to batik and tie and dye. We've talked about it a lot. Now, another method is the printing method down towards the adding of colors and then pattern. They will have the embroidery and other types of what needle work. They will have the tablet weaving. They will have the lace making. All these are ways we can embellish textile. Now, that brings the textile art techniques, which is different from the textile crafting. All right. I want to believe you're following. Okay. So if you don't, I want you to go back to the video again, watch it over, over again, you know. Then you can ask your teacher in school, what do you think this uncle is talking about? I really didn't get it, but it's simple. The craft of textile is the process of converting the yarn into fabric. That is the craft. Now, the textile art techniques is the art of embellishing decorative designs or motif on the textile. That is the two different ways of what differentiating these two things. So I don't make mistakes about them. Now, this is looming method. This is exactly what I'm telling you. Now, this is the craft of textile. It has gone out of rope. It has gone out of an ordinary um, wool. It has gone out of an ordinary cotton down to yarn. The yarn now is now being loomed into a beautiful ashoki. Adire anything you want to call it all right so that is that okay now let's continue so this is exactly what i'm trying to explain now those zian has been played with in several ways maybe with needle with weaving this is automatically this picture you're seeing is an installation of what textile design is all about so these are different methods of what making playing with textile all right so now let's continue and let's look at the construction method of what textile the construction method now we've talked about the textile arts now we're looking at the construction method which is the craft method of what the art now the construction method such as sewing knitting crocheting tailoring as well as the tools and equipment which is the loom the sewing machines the needle the techniques which are employed 
which is the quilting and the plating, and then the objects made, such as carpets, you know, the clean, the hooked rug, and the cover and the coverlets, all falls under the categories of what textile art. Now, all these things I just mentioned now, the construction method, which is the first one, the sewing, the knitting, the craft, and all that. You know, if you bring all these things down, down to the making of, you know, the utility, the, the, the last product, we all call all of them what? Textile art. All right. So now, this is the picture of a lady, you know, creating a beautiful, I don't know what they call this. It could be Ashoke, it could be Indian material, it could be anything that she's making. But that is the construction techniques of making textile. These are another construction techniques of making textile. These are another different beautiful construction techniques of making textile. Okay, so if you've been with us, now you've taken your time, you've seen all the several methods, the history, we've talked about the history of textile. All these were what some of the things we discussed during the course of the study. Now, in summary, let's look at some of the things we talked about. First, we define textile. I asked you a question, what is textile? What do you think textile is? And in which we talked about the formation of yarn down to the decoration of to make it a fabric and then we talked about the origin of fabric and then we also talked about the textile as an art we also discussed the concept in textile making we talked about textile art techniques and then we also talked about the construction method of making textile these are the things we covered in the course of the study so i'm going to ask us some question I'm going to do some Q&A and, and then we'll now go over to our road where we'll now try our hands, you know, in answering some wire questions, some basic questions, some jam questions, and then we'll get it now. The first question I have here on my screen is, what is the origin of fabric? Yes, we talked about it earlier. How old? Where did it start from? I could remember I explained something in details based on my understanding from my religion background. So you, what is the origin of your own fabric? Then number two question I wanted to answer is explain textile as an art. Explain textile as an art. What they are automatically telling you is to discuss textile. So talk about everything we've just learned. So if you cannot answer any of those questions, I urge you to go back, then go through the video again and again so I can have answers to this question. All right, so now let's go over to, okay, now let's answer some simple questions, you know, from your best your wire questions, and then try them. All right, you're very familiar with this word. Okay, so now the first question I want us to try hands on now is question one, which of this material is synonymous to batik and tie and dye? Now this is talking about the act of textile. So which of the material now that is synonymous to this? I will advise you go look at our previous videos, you know, to enhance what we just learned now. So some of the materials, we talked about the resist method, and I could remember I explained a little bit about it that relates to, you know, the, the, the pattern of decorating fabric is a resist method. So we use either rope or wax that is now. They say, which of this material is synonymous to batik and tie and dye? Now then we have wax. Wax is synonymous to batik alone. Soda. Soda is synonymous to but tie and dye, raffia, beads, and then stretch. So which of them, starch rather, which of them is synonymous to batik and tie and dye? So now the answer is raffia, rope. Raffia, you use rope in both batik and then in tie and dye. So that is one of the materials that is synonymous tie and dye all right so now let's take another question all right now decorative dawn fabric with wax and dye is known as dash decorative dawn fabric with wax and dye is known as dash a embroidering is it done with wax and die. B. Batik. Is it done with wax and die? C. Painting. Is it done with wax 
and dye and printing and then we have tie and dye so which of this one is done with wax and dye you should know that it is batik batik is the resist method of what tie and dye so that is the correct answer for that so we use it to decorate fabric batik you use wax to block some of the places you've made your design so that the color or the dye would not flow in you know to dent those places you don't want your color to dent all right so let's try our final question and then we we'll call it a day all right so now let's look at the final question and then that's question number 15 leather can be used for the production of the following except leather can be used for the production of the following remember leather falls under textile when we talked about the mediums or the materials that can be used for textile we talked about leather you know synthetic fiber we talked about cotton we talked about fibers so I mentioned but a few we talked about plants all right so now leather can be used for the production of the following except a belt b book c shoe d bag and e cap automatically leather can be used in the production of all of them except b which is what book all right thank you so very much till we meet again in our next class bye bye <laughs>